Jerome Davison is yet another ex-football player running for Congress. I don't know what it is with football players and this obsession with being in politics, but it's got to stop. He released a recent campaign ad that was deeply disturbing to a lot of people. So I want to play it and talk about what's wrong with it, but not just the ad. I also want to talk about some of the more disturbing stuff that this guy has had to say recently. The ad is nowhere near the only disturbing thing that this guy has said. So let's watch the ad. Just give you a little context to this. Came out mid-June 2021. Check this out. Democrats like to say that no one needs an AR-15 for self-defense. That no one could possibly need all 30 rounds. But when this rifle is the only thing standing between your family and a dozen angry Democrats in Klan hoods, you just might need that semi-automatic and all 30 rounds. That is Jerome Davison's ad. Inherent in the ad is the supposition that Democrats are KKK members. That's an interesting claim, but let me tell you why that's incorrect for anybody who's unaware. Let me just show you the election map from Kennedy v. Nixon. This is from 1960, okay? If you notice, all of the southern states, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, or I'm sorry, Arkansas, all of the southern states, they're all blue. They're all voting Democrat in the 1960 election, right? The reason for that is because back then, the Democrats were the conservative party in large part. The Republicans were the liberal party. That's also the reason why Abraham Lincoln was the one that freed the slaves. Though he was a Republican, he was a liberal president. He was more liberal than his Democrat opponents. Now take a look at the 1964 election. This was after Kennedy had been assassinated. Lyndon B. Johnson came in. He was obviously a particularly liberal Democrat, an unusually liberal Democrat. At this point, he had pushed through the Civil Rights Act, basically ending segregation and things like that. The South was so upset with him. The, the Democrats were so upset with the guy that he was ending segregation that they switched parties. 1964, they voted against Lyndon B. Johnson. And you can see that playing out here. Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina all voted against Lyndon B. Johnson, the Democrat, despite the fact that Democrats were known to be the more conservative party at the time because they were upset over his decision to end segregation. 1972, it was Nixon versus McGovern, and there was just complete confusion. Nixon used a strategy called the Southern Strategy to attract Southern racists, to attract old Democrats were, that were unhappy with the fact that the Democratic candidates had been pushing through more liberal policies. He attracted them, and he also ran as a Republican, which was traditionally the more liberal party at the time. And as a result, he cleared the map. Every state except for Massachusetts voted for Nixon, the Republican, because he had been dog whistling to the conservative racists in the South, intentionally trying to attract their attention. That's when the party switch happened. That's when the Democrats, who used to be the KKK members, started voting Republican. And the more liberal people who were voting Republican switched to the Democratic Party. If that's not enough to prove it to you, let me show you this. This is an article on Washington Post. It was published November 2nd, 2016. Title is, KKK's official newspaper supports Donald Trump for president. The KKK has been supporting the Republican nominees for decades at this point. After the parties flipped, the KKK flipped with them. Among the small number of American newspapers that have embraced Donald Trump's campaign, there is one in particular that stands out. It's called The Crusader, and it's one of the most prominent newspapers of the Ku Klux Klan. Under the banner, Make America Great Again, the entire front page of the paper's current issue is devoted to a lengthy defense of Trump's message, an embrace some have labeled as a de facto endorsement. 
Make America Great Again. It's a slogan that's been repeatedly used by Donald Trump in his campaign for the presidency. Pastor Thomas Robb wrote in The Crusader, of course, Crusader being the KKK's magazine. You can see it on the shirts, buttons, posters, and ball caps, such as the one being worn here by Trump speaking at a recent rally. But can it happen? Can America really be great again? This is what we'll soon find out. While Trump wants to make America great again, we have to ask ourselves what made America great in the first place, the article continues. The short answer to that is simple. America was great not because of what our forefathers did, but because of who our forefathers were. White, presumably, is what he means by that. Anyway, the point is the KKK endorsed Donald Trump. The KKK has been endorsing Republican candidates for who knows how long, forever, since the party switch. Or how about this article from the Washington Post? Black church torched in Mississippi with vote Trump painted on the wall. Weird that the Republicans would be attacking black churches, right? Strange. Republican candidates and Republican congressmen and politicians in general absolutely love to confuse people by pointing out that Lincoln freed the slaves and make them think that they are the liberal party when in fact they're not. Republicans at this point are the conservative party and have been for a long, long time. That's exactly what this ad was doing, intentionally trying to confuse voters into thinking that he's the liberal candidate, trying to trick people into voting for him, believing that he's going to improve the lives of black Americans, when in fact the policies that he has would be detrimental to minority groups, especially black Americans. He released a video recently, mid-June 2021, where he actually explains why he made that ad and where his headspace was at the time, and it's pretty crazy. So give this a listen. Again, mid-June 2021. What was your inspiration behind putting this ad together and releasing it today? To confuse people who are not very politically involved. That's what. Well, the inspiration was me growing up in the South. I grew up in Mississippi, and there were times when the uh, the KKK would want to come through. And everybody in, in my Black community, in my community, would just be so afraid. It would be the scariest time. That doesn't surprise me. Um, that would definitely happen, especially, I think he said he's in Mississippi. I could be wrong on that. Certainly in Mississippi, there's a big KKK presence in Mississippi. Absolutely. West Virginia, too. And I have a story about that in a minute. But it gets worse, what he says. Keep listening to this. For a lot of people, people would just be so afraid. But I wasn't afraid because my father had guns in the house. My father was mm. was a gun owner. We had shotguns, and pistols, and rifles. Okay, that doesn't explain to me why you claim that Democrats are KKK members when this guy knows, being as politically involved as he is, he knows that the parties switched in the 60s. He can't possibly not know that. And aside from that, I would still have fear. The idea of having to use a gun should inspire fear in you. You shouldn't want to be in that type of position. Now, I get what he's saying here. It's like an inspirational thing, but guns are not the answer to problems. Guns are the problem in many cases. If you get in a situation where you have to use a gun against somebody, your life is likely over anyways. Even if you come out of the confrontation alive, you're going to be going through endless trials, deliberating and deciding on whether or not what you did was morally or legally right. You don't want to be in that type of situation. Instead of having guns around, you probably should have gathered into a community and been in one place to protect each other. You shouldn't aspire to have guns around as a means of defense. You should never use a gun in self-defense, ever. Guns are not a self-defense tool. You know what it is? The police are self-defense tool. We live in a civilized society. We shouldn't be resorting to guns, something as barbaric as guns to solve our problems. It is absolutely bizarre to me that anyone is in this headspace at all. 22s, you name it. And I, I didn't have any fear because we had that protection. You should have. You should have. Mm -hmm. Growing up, I discovered that the KKK was an operation or an extension of the Democrat Party. No, it's not. It was back 100 years ago. It switched parties. They endorse Republicans now. They endorse Donald Trump. Just like, this guy knows this, right? He knows this. He can't possibly not know this. And I was like, wow, I was blown away because the Democrat Party was supposed to be the friends of the black people. It was supposed to be, 
You were supposed to be the helpers of blacks, but they were the ones who have perpetuated this evil on black people at the same time they say that they're ready to help. So um, I said that I, when I got ready to run that I was gonna wedge war against the Democrats and their lies and their hate for the, for the, for the black people. And uh, the war has begun. He is honestly trying to confuse voters. That's the whole goal behind this. I'm convinced. Like, what else could he possibly be be trying to do by lying like this? He knows he's lying. This is just a flat out, blatant, bold faced lie. Anyway, interesting little factoid about me. I lived in West Virginia for many years and the KKK actually came through my town and they threw these bags with rice in them. And the, and the pamphlets inside. And they threw them at everyone's doorstep. It landed on my doorstep. And I went outside, found it sitting out there, and gave it a read. I took a picture of this. This is really old. This is before my YouTube channel. Maybe six, seven years old. I don't know. Anyway, the pamphlet says, Original Knight Riders, Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, National Office, Eisenhower Drive, Beckley, West Virginia. Wow. Join us today for God, Race, and Nation. I know you're wondering why they put rice in it. It weighs the bag so you can throw it from a car and you don't have to get out. So they drive down each street, every single block, throwing the bags at doors all the way down, basically. Here's the back of the pamphlet. Islamization of America. Now, listen to this and you tell me which party this sounds like. Who is the KKK attacking in this pamphlet? Are they attacking Democrats? Or Republicans. In 1996, Bill Clinton became the first U.S. president to hold a Rid Il Far dinner at the White House to celebrate the end of Ramadan, the Muslim month long dawn to dusk fast. Rid Al Far includes six takars or takirs. I'm sorry, I don't know Arabic. I don't speak it and I don't understand it and I don't know what these words are. Forgive me to the Arabic speakers. Maybe you can put a description of how it's supposed to be pronounced in the comment section for me. It includes six takirs, I think, the raising of hands and shouting Allahu Akbar to declare that Allah, the moon god, is the greatest. Sounds like they're attacking Democrats in that little paragraph, right? Why would they attack Democrats if they were Democrats? That's weird. Very, very weird. In 2014, Rocky Mountain High School in Fort Collins, Colorado, became the first high school to recite the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic, replacing one nation under God with one nation under Allah. I actually looked this one up forever ago. That's not true at all. It's a complete fabrication. A school club had decided to, for a diversity day type of thing, say the Pledge of Allegiance in a bunch of different languages. They said it in French and English, uh, all at the same time. Spanish, Arabic, Mandarin, Japanese, bunch of different languages. And the word in Arabic for God is Allah. So naturally, when they got to the under God part, they pronounced it under Allah because that's the word you would use in Arabic. So what they're doing here is twisting this information around and fabricating what isn't there to make it fit what they wanted it to fit. That's the KKK for you, though. Did anybody expect any differently from this group, honestly? Department of Homeland Security, whose senior fellow Mohammed Elaberry recently declared that USA is an Islamic country. What kind of a delusion do these people live in? Honestly, to think that this is an Islamic country, even in 2000 and I don't know, 15 or 16, when I first got this, it wasn't anywhere near an Islamic country, like not even close. Islam isn't in America to be equal to any other faith, but to become dominant. <laughs> Talk about the pot calling the kettle black over here. The Quran should be the highest authority in America and Islam, the only accepted religion on earth. Supposedly a quote from Omar Ahmed, chairman of the Board of Care, Council on America-Islamic Relations. Uh, deeply doubt that one's true, just like the under One Nation Under Allah bit that they put in there. I'm going to bet. I, I would put money on the fact that they are either fabricating or completely twisting out of proportion in that case. Rejecting Islam is not racism. It is patriotism. Allah is not God. So that's my little run-in with the KKK. They came through my town. My town of Milton, West Virginia, was known as a sundown town, not a welcoming place for black people, 
to say the least, and it absolutely disgusted me. These are the people who, if you remember a couple years ago, literally chased me out of town, tried to burn my house down, threatened me, threw rocks at my house, said they were going to kidnap my kid and brainwasher to be a, a Christian and reported me to all kinds of CPS and everything everywhere, all because I reported a teacher for trying to convince the students that it was wrong to be trans or atheist. That This is the town that did that, the one that also produced this document here. Do these people ever think Muslims come to America to escape Sharia law? No. They think they come to America to take it over. Seriously. They really do. This is my first exposure to the great replacement theory. Uh, conspiracy theory. I saw this YouTube video a while back. And in the YouTube video, it was this guy doing this math saying that if people start reproducing now like they were instructed to by the Iranian government or whatever, by 2022 or something like that, we will be 50% Muslim in the United States because Iran instructed every Muslim person everywhere in the world to start having babies, and if they re reproduce at this rate and blah, 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 it was all nonsense. All of it, obviously. This video came out like 12 years ago or something when YouTube was young. It was all BS from the start. But, you know, anything to fear monger anything to scare people they'll say it whatever it takes before we continue i just wanted to mention something if you like what i do and you want to see me continue to do it you can support me in a few ways first there's patreon that's probably the best way but if you want to get something back for your support you can check out my teespring or you can check out my telltale unfiltered channel i go through long form unhinged sermons from all kinds of people from hank kuneman to greg Locke to jehovah's witnesses so give it a look links are in the description okay now back to the video listen to what this candidate jerome davison has to say next and tell me it doesn't sound just like this pamphlet jesus christ the messiah who's going to come back on this earth for a thousand years and reign on this earth a thousand years is a political figure and the government shall be on his shoulder according to isaiah 9. but um but the antichrist is also a political figure yes and he's also making his move in this last day i see him i see it being birthed and manifested through the Democrat Party. I see a spiritual battle brewing in this country. Oh, yeah. And, and evil has manifested itself through the, the, the Democrat Party. I see them as a criminal cartel. I see them as uh, traffickers, traffickers, <sighs> uh, supporters of all types of evil. They are drug dealers, weapon dealers, and they need to be stopped. Tell me that doesn't sound exactly like what the pamphlet was saying. He framed things up exactly the same way as the KKK does against Islam in this very specific case, but against all kinds of other minority groups. The Democrats are evil. The Democrats are trying to birth the Antichrist to bring about Armageddon or something. He framed it up the exact same way. This is so deeply sad that this person is carrying water for the KKK and effectively rehabilitating their reputation to some degree by telling people that it's actually Democrats that are KKK members like that. It is absolutely deeply disgusting what he's doing. Deeply, deeply disgusting. He actually went on Alex Jones's show to deliver some hard-hitting truths, too. Mid-June 2021, listen to this. When I get in here, I'm going to wedge war against these evil evil people people don't understand and this is what democrats of course are these evil evil people america needs to wake up and understand right now you need to wake up right now because your sissified churches and pastors are not going to come to the rescue they are not involved in this spiritual battle you need to understand that evil is evil and america does not understand how evil is because they think that this is some kind of movie this is a real evil takeover and they're coming to take your children from you they're coming to take your wealth your life and everything from you right now they're going to take your free speech and then they're going to take your life away and it's going to be over here in this country we well, only have a I window can't we need you in congress bad jerome davison so deeply wrong so deeply disgusting to see somebody taking the exact same positions as a universally hated organization like the kkk because of the hate that the kkk puts into the world 
and he is carrying water for this group. So here's my question for you. Does this guy really not know the history of the Democratic Party? Does he really not know that the KKK is actually a Republican group at this point? I mean, it, if somebody sat him down in front of us and explained this to him and showed him the maps that I showed you guys earlier, would it click? Would he accept it? Would he recognize it? Or does he already know all of this stuff and has set his sights on covering it up? I don't know. Let me know what you think about it in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at Telltale Atheist.